All right, so we'll get started. So I am here today with Jessica and Dean from Monarch Health, and we're going to be talking about healthcare uh, and the culinary services within long-term and short-term care. So excited to have you both here today, and it looks like we have a few students joining us, so that's great. Hopefully we get some good questions asked. Um, if not, I'll come up with some and hopefully keep the conversation going, but the, the floor is yours if people kind of want to give an introduction and then just jump into it and we'll go from there. Yeah, that's not an issue at all. So yes, my name is Dean. I am a recruitment specialist for Monarch. I've been with the company for a little over two and a half years now and it's been a great time. Um, I'm excited to speak with all of you here and hopefully um, I can both myself and Jessica can provide great information in regards to our culinary opportunities with Monarch. Yes, my name is Jessica. I'm also a recruitment specialist. I started with Monarch back in April and I just recently graduated from UMD um, this past May. So yeah. Perfect. So we do have a bit of a PowerPoint to share with you all. So I'm going to share that with you in just one second here. Just bear with me. Okay. If you want to hit the display the things. And then duplicate. There we are. All right. Can everyone see the PowerPoint? You just nod your head, yes or no? Looks like we're good. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. So we do have just a brief PowerPoint to kind of go over. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what Monarch is as a company and then our culinary opportunities. Um, with Monarch, we have a culinary aid position, a culinary cook position, and then um, this is kind of more so down the line here, but we do have a culinary director position for those who uh, really do enjoy the world of culinary and would like to advance uh, their, your careers in culinary, we do have a director level type of position, which is something that you could maybe consider down the road here. So uh, first things first, we'll kind of just again go over with what Monarch is. Uh, well, we have many different locations throughout the state of Minnesota and which we'll talk about. And kind of like what I said before, we do have three different types of culinary positions, a culinary aide, a culinary cook, and then lastly, a culinary director. And then after that, we'll leave it up for questions. So Monarch, uh, I'm not sure if any of you have ever heard of Monarch, but if you haven't, not, not a big deal. Uh, we are a new company. So we actually started in 2015. Um, our main headquarters are located in Mankato, Minnesota, which is Southern Minnesota. Um, now both Jessica and I, we were actually located in Roseville, Minnesota, um, which is a little bit more like North Metro area, closer to the Twin Cities area. Um, that's kind of where we're office, but our main headquarters are in Mankato. Uh, we started with about seven or so different facilities back in 2015. And then fast forward to 2020, five years later, we have a little bit over 40 different facilities throughout the state of Minnesota, and also one in Superior, Wisconsin um, as well. But as you can tell, we have grown quite a bit within the last five years. And so we are very excited to uh, have those who also want to grow with us because we um, are very passionate and we love doing what, what we do. Um, so, and so some of you may be wondering, what is the thing that we do? And so Monarch, what we, uh, have is we have assisted living facilities and skilled nursing facilities throughout the state. And so we typically work with the elderly population, but not always, but uh, most of our residents are in the geriatric community or the elderly population. And we provide daily assistance for them, whether that's through nursing, culinary, uh, housekeeping, maintenance, social services, therapeutic recreation, uh, human resources, which is what myself and Jessica are in uh, business office work. Uh, there's a lot of different types of roles that we have. I'm sure I forgot a couple, but uh, there are many, many different employment opportunities with Monarch. Um, so our main mission is to kind of change the way uh, people think about long-term care. Unfortunately, there is a negative stigma or just a 
uh, a negative way of thinking when it comes to long-term care and just senior care. And so with Monarch, we definitely want to change that perception of how people think. Because at Monarch, we are a company that enjoys helping others, especially those in need. Um, and like I said, typically our residents are uh, in the elderly population, the geriatric community, and they need daily assistance. And so we take pride in providing the best quality care possible for each and every single resident that we have. So our main goal is to provide the best care possible for each and every single resident. All right, so um, as you can see here on our map, we have facilities again throughout all over the state of Minnesota. Um, I'm not entirely sure where all of you are from, but there is a good chance that we will have a facility in the nearby area. Um, we have facilities as far north as Duluth, Grand Rapids, Virginia, Eveleth, um, as far south as Mankato, Faribault, uh, Lake Crystal. And then we have many different facilities in the metro area. Um, so Roseville, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Bloomington, Stillwater, Anoka, Fridley. Uh, I'm sure I have forgotten a couple more there, but uh, basically, as you can see on our, by our map, we have uh, many different facilities all over the place. And so with our culinary aid and culinary cook positions, which is why we are here today, uh, we have those positions available at all of our facilities. All of our facilities are always looking to hire individuals who have a passion in helping others through, through food. And so uh, we have full-time positions, part-time positions. We can be very flexible with the hours, um, whether it's the morning shift or the evening shift. I understand that all of you are students, and so um, taking on maybe a full-time position while juggling school and extracurricular activities may be a bit difficult, and so we understand that. Um, so we do have part-time positions available. Maybe you could work a couple hours after school or work on the weekends or something like that. We can be very flexible with your school schedule. So this is definitely a great opportunity for you to start gaining some real world experience, build up that resume, because in a few years, maybe next year, a couple years from now, you'll be uh, potentially going off to college. And when colleges see that you do have some work experience that will definitely kind of help you uh, set apart from your colleagues when looking for jobs. And so if you can start building up that resume now and gaining some really good experience as a high school student, um, why not take that opportunity? Um, because Monarch, we definitely hire a lot of high school students. And so uh, we want to, you know, give back to you and provide you the best opportunities possible to set you up for success in the future. All right. So here we do have a short 30, 40 second video in regards to our culinary uh, department here and culinary positions. So I'll just have you all watch that for a little bit here. So as you can see there um, from the video, it mentioned no prior experience needed, which is uh, correct. If you do have experience working um, in culinary or maybe you cook for your family or um, for your friends, that's great. But if, if not, if you've never um, you know, really had any experience cooking, but you have that interest, working with us will definitely give you all the tools that you need to succeed. And maybe you could develop a career out of, uh, out of cooking for others. All right. So culinary aids. Um, I can just read briefly here about our culinary aids. So 
our culinary aides um, are very essential to our culinary department. Uh, their main responsibilities would be setting up the dining room to make sure that all of our residents have what they need when it comes to breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, they work very closely with our culinary cooks uh, just to make sure that, uh, again, each and every single resident has what they need. Um, so you'll be working very closely with the residents um, along with um, our nursing assistants to make sure that if there are any uh, dietary restrictions or if there is something that a resident would like to have on that particular day, um, you'll be responsible for getting that specific food item or you'll be working with the nursing assistant and with the culinary cook to make sure that that resident can have what they're asking for. So it's a great way to kind of build experience and um, it's a great way to just really give back to our residents. So as I said before, um, our culinary aides, uh, they assist with setting up the dining room, uh, making sure our tray cart and our, uh, our trays are all in order. They'll also be in charge with kitchen cleanup, just so that the kitchen um, is ready for, for, uh, for future purposes. Um, you'll also assist with making sure that we have enough supplies um, for, for all the services, uh, making sure we have enough food items each and every single day, making sure that making sure that the food temperature is in order. Um, that's very critical and very important because some residents can only have maybe hot food or maybe cold food or um, a specific temperature for their food. So we have to make sure that we are meeting that temperature for uh, those residents. Like I said, full-time, part-time hours are available. We can be very flexible with your school schedule. So if you can only work after school, only work on the weekends, only for a couple hours, not an issue at all. Like I said, we've hired culinary or high school culinary, culinary aides in the past. And so it always tends to work out for both the facilities and for the students. So it's not an issue at all there. And it, it really is a great way to grow with Monarch. Um, it's a great entry level position. You'll gain a lot of great experience and um, you could definitely branch off to other different positions with Monarch um, if you find out that culinary may not be your passion, but maybe you're interested in nursing, for instance. Well, you could definitely work as a culinary aide for a while, and then um, if you feel as if it's not the right place for you, but you really like the facility and you really like helping out residents, we can definitely find other opportunities for you, maybe working as a nursing assistant or working in our activities department, whatever the case may be, we can definitely find a fit for you. But working as a culinary aide is definitely a great starting point with us. And then our culinary cooks. And so um, as kind of what the title suggests, the culinary cook is the one who would be preparing the meals um, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, it's very important, you'll be working in the kitchen with uh, the rest of the culinary cooks. Um, also, you'll be working closely with the culinary director as well to make sure that all the meals are cooked properly and are, and are done appropriately to, uh, to, the, to the needs of each and every single resident. And so um, this is a very important position. It does help that, it does help if you do have prior experience cooking, but if you don't, not an issue at all. All of our facilities have great culinary directors who can kind of help train you to learn all the different recipes. And um, it's, it's definitely a good learning experience overall. So it may be a bit intimidating at first, but you're definitely in good hands with each and every single culinary director who will take their time to make sure that you are able to prepare all of our meals for all of our residents. So with our culinary cooks, um, you'll be able to, you know, follow different recipes, different uh, diet orders, um, and really just make sure that each and every single resident um, has exactly what they have ordered. Um, a lot of our residents do have special dietary needs. And so um, 
And so with, with, with that, we do have to just make sure that when we are cooking the food, it meets exactly what they can eat. Um, so it, it definitely involves a lot of uh, critical thinking and being detail oriented. But again, you'll have a great team of individuals to, to help you through that process. You'll be working again very closely with, the, with our culinary aides and then also our uh, culinary director to make sure that all the meals are being prepared correctly. And with our culinary cooks, it's, uh, we also have full-time and part-time hours at all of our facilities. So this is definitely a great uh, position for students who are interested in culinary and want to gain that experience and really make a difference in the lives of our residents. And then lastly, our culinary directors. Now this position is definitely more of a managerial supervisory role. Um, but it doesn't hurt to kind of think about it now. Um, it, it's, it's definitely something that you could definitely strive for in, in the near future. Um, our culinary directors are in charge, essentially in charge of the kitchen and are in charge of the culinary department for our facility. So they do a lot of different things. Um, they'll sometimes cook the meals. They'll be on the front line cooking the meals with our cooks. Sometimes they'll pass out uh, the meals as well, helping out the culinary aides. They'll work behind the scenes as well with budget and inventory management. Um, they'll work closely with other department directors uh, to make sure that everything is in order and in place when it comes to the culinary needs for our residents. Um, so again, they do a lot of different things. Uh, they make sure that inventory is all set up for each and every single meal service. Um, they'll attend care conferences with families of the residents to make sure that uh, the meals that are being prepared are, are okay with the family members of the residents. Um, and again, overall, they, they are the ones who are the leaders of the culinary department for the facility. So this is a definitely a great leadership opportunity. It's definitely not something uh, you may want to consider now, but down the road uh, in, in the near future, if you do find yourself really interested in, in pursuing a career in culinary, uh, we just want to let you know that we do have those um, managerial supervisory roles with Monarch. And so culinary directors, great role to be in. It's a great leadership opportunity. And um, if you really like being in charge of a team and really making that positive difference, this is a great opportunity in the near future. So with that, that's all that we have to kind of go over right now. So thank you all for taking your time to listen to us. Uh, do we have any questions at all at this moment? So students will do this just as we always do. Uh, if you have questions, just submit those to the chat. Um, while we're waiting for those questions to come through, I have a couple that have come to mind. And I'm thinking it's probably a little bit more related to uh, the culinary cook and the director position, but how important would it be for the cook and the director and possibly even the aide to have a basic understanding of nutrition? Oh, sure. It's definitely important because we want to make sure that, um, as I had mentioned before, a lot of our residents do have dietary needs or special needs dietary restrictions. So it does help if you do have that if you have some background information with nutrition, just knowing what, um, what is healthy, what isn't healthy. Uh, um, I know the culinary director and the culinary cooks work very closely with our registered dietitian as well. Um, so typically we have um, a, a registered dietitian for a few of our facilities and they'll go to each, every, each and every single facility to speak with the culinary director with the culinary cooks to make sure that uh, everything is in order when it comes to food. So I would say it, it is important um, to have some prior knowledge when it comes to nutrition, but it's definitely not necessary. If you don't have any knowledge, again, we can definitely, we'll definitely train you and we'll provide the tools um, so that you can succeed in your role. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. And I'm still not seeing any other questions come through, so I'll just kind of ask the other ones that I have on, well, on the back is, of my mind, too. There is one question here, actually. Um, looks like 
question was asked, do you need a college degree for, a, for the culinary cook? Good question. Uh, no, you do not need a college degree to be a culinary cook. We do have some high schoolers um, who are working as culinary cooks right now. So you do not need a college degree. Um, prior experience is um, helpful and we do take that into consideration, but if you don't have that experience, but we feel as if you're passionate enough to take the time to learn and to really grow with us, um, we can definitely uh, make that work. Um, so to answer your question, no, you do not need a college degree. And then we got another one here. How old do you have to be to become a culinary aide? Yeah, good question, good question. So to be a culinary aide, or I guess is more of a general answer for, for Monarch employment, you do have to be 16 years or older um, for any of our positions, including a culinary aide. So um, with that, if you're not 16 years right now, you know, please keep us in mind. We do have volunteer opportunities as well. Maybe you can kind of volunteer at some of our facilities. Um, and then once you do turn of age, you can definitely submit that application and we can kind of get the process going. But to answer your question, you do have to be 16 years or older to work as a culinary aide. And then would you be able to recommend dishes as a culinary cook? Yeah, good question. Uh, yes, you would be able to recommend dishes. Um, I know you could, if you do have a dish in mind that you like to cook for your friends and family members, you can definitely bring that up with your supervisor or with the culinary director. And um, I know they would be more than happy to kind of take a look at what the dish is. And um, as I said before, a lot of our residents may have or do have dietary restrictions or dietary needs. So we may need to make some adjustments um, to that particular recipe that you have in mind. But uh, I, I do know in the past, uh, there have been cooks who have gone to their culinary director to maybe recommend a specific dish that they like to cook. So yes, to answer your question, yes, you can definitely uh, recommend specific dishes um, to your culinary director and they can, um, if, if, they like, if they like your dish and if they think that it could fit with our residents' needs, we can definitely make that work. Yeah, that's great. So you can definitely have some different recipes at each location then. Right, yep, definitely. Yeah, I know um, our culinary uh, departments, they like to do something called the, uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of their version of the Hunger Games, where they kind of do like a cook-off between different facilities. And it's actually kind of fun because uh, I, I've been a judge for one of those I guess they call it the culinary games. I've been a judge for one of those. And it's, it's really nice to taste different types of food and how every single facility has their own twist on uh, what their culinary meals are. So it's, actually, it's, it's a fun way to kind of taste what they're serving to our residents. And honestly, all the food's delicious. So, uh, so yeah, you can definitely, you know, re try different types of food and we'll definitely have different recipes throughout the year. Yeah, I'd like to be a judge for that too. I bet you get a lot of really good food. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, let's see, how many students apply to become a culinary aide each year? Oh, that, that's a really good question. Um, unfortunately, I don't really have the, the data or the logistics behind how many students, but to, from what I have have seen um, in regards to applications coming in, I would say a, a decent amount. Um, it, it, it does depend on what facility um, some facilities may attract more high school students than others. Um, some, we have some facilities that are really close to high schools. Um, for instance, if you are in the Delano area, we do have a, we, our facility is about two, maybe three blocks away from their high school. And I know we have hired a handful of culinary aides from the, from the Delano High School before in the past. Um, so unfortunately, I, I don't have an exact answer or I can't give you an exact percentage of how many uh, culinary aides are students, but I do know we do hire a good amount. So it could be somewhat competitive depending on the area that you're in too. It, it can, yes, yes, it can. But again, I think it's because it's a great opportunity to grow with a growing company such as ours. So it's just a wonderful place to be. Yeah, definitely makes sense. Uh, does Monarch allow high school students to volunteer during COVID? Ah, that's a really good question. So during COVID, at, 
at this time, the majority of our facilities aren't allowing um, individuals to come into our facilities just to make sure that our residents are safe. Um, we do hope that in the near future, we can, uh, we can start allowing um, more people to come into our facilities. Um, I, I don't believe we have really any volunteer opportunities at this moment just due to COVID, but uh, we do hope that'll change in the near future. And uh, I, I believe we'll actually have our um, HR meeting next, next month. And that's something that we can discuss in regards to volunteer opportunities and whether or not we'll be able to have people volunteer uh, in the near future, but good question. And I think that's for some other long-term care facilities too. So students, if you're thinking about that, um, volunteering at a local long-term care facility, um, a lot of what's coming from MDH, I believe is around population health and how many cases are in your city and town and, and that sort of a thing too. So it's not a bad idea just to mm -hmm. either call or email the HR department if you're planning on volunteering just to see kind of what they're thinking on that. Yeah. And it looks like we have one other question. Um, what types of recipes do culinary cooks make? That's a really good question. Um, I do know um, every single facility is a little bit different. It's kind of just based off of the population of our residents and what they like to eat and what they don't like to eat. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of a dish that they have made recently. I know I, I believe yesterday, actually, I, I believe they kind of had, uh, at our facility in Roseville, they had kind of a Thanksgiving dinner plate of, of sorts. So they had mashed potatoes, they had uh, turkey, they had some corn and green beans, um, which looked delicious. Honestly, I was kind of upset that I wasn't able to get a plate myself, but um, uh, they make many different types of recipes, anything from... Uh, oh boy, and I know they made noodle dishes before, spaghetti, um, pasta, the, uh, casseroles are a popular one, um, breakfast item foods, uh, desserts are really good too. It's hard for me to say exactly what types of recipes, um, but that's definitely something that I could look into. And Brady, I can definitely let you know what types of recipes are made at all of our facilities. And if you want to relay that information back to the students, that'd be great. Yeah, definitely, that'd be excellent. Okay. And then I have another question. Um, I'm assuming the more that you work your way up from the aide to the cook to the director, that you work a little bit less and less with the residents. Would you say that's true, that as a culinary aide, you're working more with the residents, serving meals, making sure that they have everything they need in order to eat? Yes, yes, uh, I would say that's that's pretty accurate. So as a culinary aide, you definitely have the most one-on-one, uh, one-to-one -on -one interactions with the residents um, when it comes to our culinary positions. As a culinary cook, the majority of your time will be in the kitchen. Um, you'll potentially maybe be able to have some interactions with the residents every once in a while, but uh, I would say 80 to 90% of your time, you'll be in the kitchen preparing those meals. And then as a culinary director, um, you will have those opportunities to kind of get to get to know the residents and uh, really get to uh, see what they like and what they don't like. But also a lot of your, a lot of the times you'll be working behind the scenes with um, a lot of uh, budget and budget and um, supplies and um, just, you, you won't, won't necessarily be working with the residents as much um, just because you'll be so busy with um, so many other different things as a culinary director. Um, but to answer your question, yes, as you continue to move up in our culinary uh, positions, you will have, I guess, a little bit less interactions with the residents. And then I think we kind of uh, answered this question a little bit already, but I'm going to kind of take a different spin on it. What are the education requirements that you would need to become not only the culinary aid, but is there any education needed for the cook and especially with that director position? Sure, sure. Good question. Um, so for our culinary aid and our culinary cooks, 
We don't have any specific education requirements. Um, again, we do ask for you to be at least 16 years or older, but in regards to education, if you're still in high school, if you're in college, if you're out, if you're done with school, that's perfectly fine too. Uh, we, as long as you have that passion and that drive and um, just the, if, if you want to help others and um, if you really want to make a difference for our residents, that's definitely what we're looking for. It does help if you do have prior year, prior experience. Again, if you've cooked for your family members, your friends, maybe you've worked at um, a restaurant before or um, another place where you had to deal with food, that looks really well and that's definitely great. But if you don't have any of that experience, but you're just interested interested in learning more about food and preparing meals and really making a difference for our residents, that's what we're looking for. And then for our culinary director, um, typically speaking, um, usually a college degree, um, and then also it does help if you have a couple of uh, certificates involved with our with, with culinary. So there is something called a Certificate of Dietary Manager or the Dietary Manager Certificate, um, which is also known as the CDM. Um, that is something that we do like to have all of our culinary directors have. But if you don't have that CDM, that certificate, uh, a good thing about Monarch is that we will pay for you to get that certificate done. So we'll set you up um, to take those classes and we'll pay for you to obtain that certificate because we want you to be the the most qualified that you can be to prepare the best meals and provide the best services for our residents. Yeah, excellent. Students, do you have any other questions that are kind of hanging out there that you want to ask about the culinary positions? Oh, so it looks like we may have missed a question here. There was, well, there was one question about ha asking us personally, have you, have you gotten to try any of them? And I'm assuming them meaning the food that the cooks have prepared. And to answer that question, I have. Yes, I have been able to try a couple of the recipes and they've been delicious. Uh, they've been really, really good. Jessica, I'm not sure if you've had yet. No, I haven't been able to because I started in May and that's kind of, you know, COVID, that's, it's been going on. So I haven't been able to get out to the facilities mm -hmm. as much as I would like to. Yeah, so, um, Unfortunately, Jessica has not, but hopefully in the near future, once we're able to kind of go to other different facilities, um, we'll be able to, or she'll be able to try more of the foods and I'll be able to try more of the foods. So, yep. And then if a student works as a culinary aide at Monarch, do you think they'd get a letter of recommendation from the manager or other people that are there? Sure, really good question. Uh, so to kind of answer that question, I would say you could definitely have the opportunity to ask your your manager, your director, your supervisor, maybe another co-worker of yours for a letter of recommendation. Um, it's it's more so about how well you're you're performing at your job and um, how well you like it there. And you, if you feel comfortable with asking your supervisor or another co-worker of yours for a letter of recommendation, that's definitely not an issue at all. I know personally, I have done that in the past. I have asked my supervisor in the past for a letter of recommendation. And so uh, thankfully I was able to build a good enough relationship prior to asking my supervisor and my supervisor uh, was, was happy to, to write me a letter of recommendation. So I would say if you were to ask your supervisor or a coworker, just make sure that you have built uh, a, a decent relationship with them. Um, but it's definitely not out of the norm. It's pretty pretty normal and uh, for the most part if you do have a good relationship with them they would write they would write you a letter of recommendation yeah and i'd say that across the board for most jobs too as long as you have a pretty good reputation with your manager you should be able to get a letter of recommendation all right anything else that's hanging out there students All right, well, if there are any other questions, feel free to message me through Schoology or I'll also be posting um, both Jessica and Dean's emails to the live Q&A for the culinary folder. So you can reach out to them directly. 
Um, just like on Tuesday, feel free to reach out to them about their CNA careers too, or maybe there's some other opportunities that they didn't really get to talk about within the last two meetings with them. Um, so feel free to really reach out to them too, because that's a big portion of their job is connecting with you all too. So yeah, um, absolutely. Definitely some good resources. So thank you both for joining us. No, thank you. Thank you all for being able to speak with us. I know, unfortunately, with yesterday, there were some issues and I know today is a bit of an earlier start time, but thank you all for, you know, being here and uh, waking up early on a Friday, Friday morning. So we really do appreciate speaking to you. And um, yes, if you have any questions, uh, Brady will send you all our contact information. So please reach out to us at any time. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Yes, you too as well. Have a great weekend, everyone.